palsy um, and all it can bring to the technical instructions where CAD models need to be given to the user in a simple, accurate and in an interactive way. So without further ado, I'll introduce the speakers from Dossalt Systems. They've kindly volunteered their time for this event, which will include a brief introduction to Dossalt Systems, followed by a live working demonstration of the Katia Composer system. After the event, we will hold a Q&A session where hopefully we will be able to answer all the questions within the allotted time. So, the presenters for today, um, beginning with Andrew Preston, who is a Dassault Systems client executive. He will be handling all the questions and uh, coming up with the answers later on in the session. The main speaker, however, will be Joachim Bier, a Dassault Systems Katia mechanical industry process expert, senior specialist and all round good guy. So, um, yeah, yeah. Hand over to Joachim now. Well, Andrew first do the present to the introduction, and then over to Joachim. So thanks, Brilliant. guys. Thank, thank you, Dave, and uh, good afternoon, everybody. I hope you're all uh, you're doing well, and, and thank you for taking the time to to join the webinar today, um, presented by Dasso Systems on how to communicate your product with with Katia Composer. We've only got the hour together today, so I'll, I'll briefly cover the agenda and then we can get straight into the, the presentation and, and later the live demonstration. Um, firstly, I um, I just wanted to, to, to introduce my, my, myself and Joachim from Dasso. We'll then provide a brief overview of Dasso systems um, before handing over the reins to Joachim, who will talk about Katia Composer before diving into the, the live demonstration of the software. Um, as, as Dave alluded to, um, I'm hopeful we should have 10 to 15 minutes um, at the end of the session for, for a QA. and a um, however, I would welcome you to, to please post your, your questions in um, in the Ask a Question tab um, uh, as the chat functions. We move through the session. I can then collate those those questions as we as we move through the session and feed them back to to Joachim at the end. If, if there are any questions that we're unable to, to answer, um, we will we will collect them and we will distribute them at, at, at the end of the end of the session. So uh, very very briefly, introduction to myself and, and Dave's kindly done that already. Um, I'll be your, your host and facilitator for today's session. Um, so I'm based in the, in the UK, uh, and, and as Dave said, my, my role is the BAE Systems Client Executive, and that essentially means I'm responsible for the partnership between BAE Systems PLC in the UK and Dasso Systems as, as well. Um, and you can see my contact details at the bottom there. If you have got any questions, please direct them in the first instance to myself, and I can then um, sort of facilitate answers with the, with the wider team. I'll add those details into the chat function once I, I hand over to, to, to Joachim. So uh, more importantly, to introduce Joachim. Um, so, so Joachim Bauer is based in Cologne, Germany, um, long-standing career within the industry. Um, since 2010, has been uh, uh, our leading solution consultant for Katia Composer and as our Katia uh, Composer expert who will uh, conduct the, the introduction and, and the demonstration. Um, so just briefly, if you could move on, Joachim, to the, the next slide, please. Just to introduce our company for, for those of you that, 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 that don't, don't know us. So, so Dasso Systems are the, the 3D experience company. And this, this slide briefly explains what, what that means to, to, to us. So we're a, a purpose driven company by combining our science and technology to try and create a more sustainable world for our for our customers and our consumers. We've got around 20,000 people um, across 140 nationalities across the globe and they're at the heart of the company and, and, and what we, we do. We, we, we have a very, very strong and large research and development team that's connected globally across 69 laboratories and, and that's in addition to 195 DS offices across the globe, many of those here in, in the UK, but centered out of our three main headquarters, Boston, Paris, and uh, Shanghai. So I think sometimes people refer to Dasso as perhaps the, um, the, 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 one of the most sort of prominently used but unknown organizations uh, sort of globally within, within our arena. So, so Dasso Systems actually has the largest PLM and 3D market share, uh, over 270,000 customers uh, focusing and working within 11 industries worldwide. And, and, and the industry is an important part. It's, an, it's a fundamental aspect of, of how Dassault Systems partners 
with clients who are the leaders in their their industry segments and, and it allows us to not only be at the cutting edge of technology but also enables us to to answer today's and tomorrow's market needs with input from our our industry experts and, and industry leaders um again continuing that theme of, of, sort of partnering we, we work with over twelve thousand partners again sort of increasing that that knowledge and know-how across technology sales service a lot around education and and, and research um so within those those 270,000 customers we've got over 25 million users using our, our various tool sets within the, the 3d experience platform um, so i'm just now going to move on welcome to the uh the legacy and, and and our journey so we've been a big enabler of the world sort of great industrial transformations over over the past three or four 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 decades and, and every decade we have tried to help manufacturers to disrupt how the products are designed how they're made and and to really rethink their whole development and, and production methods um and we're, we're, we're moving now from the fourth stage of our history as a, as a 3d experience platform into how we can start to look at the virtual twin experience of of, of humans but of humans rather the first stage to, to look at is perhaps is our, our, our heritage, based out of our heritage with, with Dassault Aviation, is within 3D design. Um, and that's to represent the um, the surface of things. And this was marked by the launch of our CATIA product. So creating and engineering parts and assemblies in 3D, achieving that high performance innovation first time. And, and as we move towards the end of the, the that, that decade, the second stage was how do we look at a 3D digital mock-up DMU? enables us to represent the entire complex systems outside and, and inside. So bringing the 3D pieces together from, 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 from 3D design to simulate the complete engineering context of a virtual model, replacing those physical mock-ups through, through sort of that collaboration, collaborative innovation. The third stage, uh, moving into, um, if you just go back a slide, sorry, Joachim, just a, a couple right. of slides. There we go, thank you. Um, the third stage was, was the 3D product lifecycle management, PLM which was what we call, you know, looking at the life cycle end to end of that full product management entirely within 3D. So from, from design right through to recycling, production and distribution. Um, looking at trying to provide that innovation at, at every stage of the, of the value chain. The fourth stage, which I think a lot of you may well know us for, for now is, is, is 3D experience. So how do we represent sort of the, the perception of an emotions rather than just the product itself? So you know, we feel that the value now lies in the usage rather than just simply the product itself. And and that's what we, we call here the, the, the experience economy, you know, helping our customers innovate by and for their, their consumers as, as we move forward. And and now to get into the, the 2020s, we're, we're, we're working into the, the fifth stage of this journey, which is moving from the sort of representation of, of not just things, but also to life. So uh, through our, our, our recent acquisition of, acquisition of, of metadata, um, you know, how we can start to imagine being able to model, test, and cure the human body in a similar way that, you know, from our legacy within planes, cars, submarines, whatever it may well be. And we call that the virtual twin ex experience of, of humans. Um, so just moving on very, very briefly, my my last slide before uh, handing over to, to Joachim is 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 around the, the, the 3D experience platform, as, as, as we call it. So you can see on the left-hand side there, the 3D experience platform is is, is a platform to, to, to capture knowledge, know-how. It's, it's a truly collaborative environment and it empowers businesses and people to, to, to innovate in, a, in a, an entirely new world moving on from the, the sort of the, the historical PLM piece that, that we looked at back in back in the late 90s um, and it's, it's all about creating the ability to, 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 to collect a, a really diverse a piece of, of knowledge and know-how and how to connect the dots between the people the ideas and the data internally within your organization but also with your with your partners and your peers out, out outside uh, and the 3d experience platform is symbolized by our by our compass um, which which takes on different realms and different capabilities to, to, to bring together that full sort of digital tool twin so if we start with the, the the west quadrant which is really where we create and visualize products uh, and then the related experience that that translates from our, our dna from, from Katia and wider to, to model and represent as scientifically accurate as possible. Um, and it's given birth to, to you know, unique portfolio of modeling technologies ranging from 3D modeling, systems, logical and, and functioning model, modeling. We then move around to the, to the south quadrant, which is where we can look to evaluate the, the possible business solutions by 
by confronting them with the reality. So that that you know we're looking at how we can combine the virtual and the real to to to, to, to correspond to real time realistic simulations. So we're looking at multi physics, multi scale, and multi discipline assets. Enable us to run scenarios that can take into account, you know, full constraints um, of robustness, weight, production costs, and and what that final experience really has to fulfil for, for for you and for your for your consumers. We then come round to the to the to the east quadrant um, where we can look to sort of calibrate and contextualise business solutions, considering all the information that we've collected within the the company and outside and. There's a big, you know, big belief within within Dasso that the big data can create the value when they're part of a representation of the model, and that gives them the meaning. The value actually lies in connecting that data to the continu contingent continuity of the digital model, um, and that's where we can, you know, really realise some some value. And then finally, we bring all that together uh, within our, our north quadrant um, with our social and collaborative apps. So the 3D experience platform allows you to, 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 to become sort of social. So extended from a, a structured program and organization and project to start bringing in social and open communities and start to collaborate in real time on, on projects, truly sort of in a, in a, in a global fashion. Um, and so the 3D experience platform, it powers our, and our, we have specific brands within those within those quadrants, um, social and collaborative, as I mentioned, 3D modeling, simulation, and then that information intelligence apps. And today we're going to focus on, on, on the West quadrant, specifically within uh, Katia and specifically within Katia Composer, which is our 3D technical communication software. Um, and just to, just to sort of finalise before I hand over to Joachim, we serve those 11 specific industries. And as I said, we, we, we take the expertise from those industries, marry them with our applications and our tool sets to bring a, a, a solution to our, our customers and, uh, and partners. Um, so thank you for, for taking the time to listen to the, the short introduction to Dasso Systems. I'm now going to hand over to, to Joachim, who's going to take you through uh, Katia Composer and I look forward to, to speaking again uh, for the, for the Q&A. Okay, thanks. Uh, thanks a lot, Andrew. So. Katia Composer is the product we want to talk about today. Um, and the first question is, what is that um, that software about? And um, it's, a, it's a software package that lets you explain your products in any way. Um, so it is made as a 3D technical communication software. That's how we, um, how we uh, named it. And it's um, the case that uh, it clearly lets you explain your products um, and reusing all your 3D assets you already have and uh, provide information in 3D downstream to all other departments after engineering. So there are different kinds of domains where the software is really used. Um, the main use cases at our current customer base are the three above here in the in the first row so um, the first is technical illustrations that means that uh, illustrators are deriving uh, 2d technical illustrations raster graphics and line arts from uh, 3d models um, but it's also used um, pretty much to produce any kinds of instructions. So service training, maintenance, repair, and assembly instructions also for the shop floor. In uh, real 3D as an animation or um, as a step-by-step -step instructions, as a set of views that uh, can be played smoothly like an animation, something like this. We will see that later on. Um, it's also used at some customers for project review. And the reason is that this, um, the native file format of Katia Composer is uh, a pretty, pretty small. So when you convert the data in the native format, um, normally it is uh, left over, let's say a half percent or a maximum of five, uh, four percent of the original CAD data, uh, depending on the quality of the tessellation. It's also used for sales and marketing and um, also for, let's say, online 3D catalogs and electronic part catalogs. And we will see later on how, how this uh, can work. Um, the main workflow, how to, to use the software is you, you will gather all your product definition 
And it's not just only the 3D geometry. That means also that you're um, importing all the meta properties, the user properties, um, and also the bill of material. Um, then it is loaded in Cartier Composer, which is the authoring software. And you enrich the scenery, um, create animations, views, um, what we call collaborative actors. That means that you're um, adding some uh, some additional information uh, like labels, text boxes, measurements, and so on. And after that, you can publish the content in different kinds of formats. So there are 3D formats like uh, the native SMG a format of Composer. You can generate executables that uh, contains all the 3D data plus our player. And um, also 2D formats like line art, CGM, SVG, TIFF, bitmap, JPEG. Um, you can produce uh, videos in AVI or what is missing here in MP4. And you can also create PDF documents in 2D or also in 3D. So once you have changes um, made in your design, you can update the, the already authored content either manually or automatically. And it's also the case that after the update, um, the distribution of your already authored content can be automated. And there is a special um, software for that. So when we have a look at um, the product lineup, what kind of software modules Cartier Composer consists of. Um, having a look at the left side here, there are two modules. The first one is Cartier Composer, which is the, the interactive authoring tool. I will show that in a minute. And the other one is Cartier Composer Enterprise Sync. This is a server-based module which can convert, update, and derive um, 2D data automatically on the server. So this is the software module which can be um, integrated, for example, into your PLM system uh, based on status changes, convert data, update data, and also publish content. For publishing um, these, these 3D assets, we have three modules. The first one is the Katia Composer Player. This is free software. That means everything you're creating in Katia Composer can be distributed and uh, played for free. That also includes a lot of interactivity. Um, I will show that later on. So for example, links or, or uh, playing uh, just uh, chapters or sequences of animations, something like this. Um, the second version of the player is the Katia Composer Player Pro. And the difference is that it has a comp comprehensive programming um, interface. So there is a there is an API which lets you integrate this this software into um, existing portals, or if you want to uh, automate things, for example, in a Microsoft Office document, or um, uh, program something in in .NET, you can use the Player Pro. The third component is a web player. Um, there are two versions. The first one is the 3D Play, which is completely integrated in the 3D experience platform. That means that um, once you have um, content created with Composer and play it back to the 3D experience platform, you can play that without any plugins on all platforms, on mostly all browsers, browsers using 3D Play. Um, the same technology is also available as a technical component. So if you do not have the 3D experience platform, you can use the Composer player, the Composer web player, and plug it in, for example, in, in, into, your, um, into your own web portal, for example, for ordering spare parts, something like this, or for maintenance, uh, maintenance instructions. instructions. Um, the 3D experience integration um, has different kinds of functionality. So there are already a lot of customers adopting their engineering processes to the 3D experience platform. So there is a need to consume all the 3D assets directly from the platform 
author the content, put it back into the platform and play it there. So it's possible to, to um, just uh, extract your 3D assets directly, load it into a Composer, and uh, then attach these documents um, to existing product structures uh, just per, per drag and drop. After that, these documents are available in, in the platform and you can play it on uh, different kinds of devices um, with uh, different kinds of uh, operating systems. You could, even, you could even play this content on your smartphone. Um, so just to show you some of our current customers, um, the first approach of Katia Composer was to um, to implement the software at big companies with complex processes. So we have a lot of customers in, in aerospace, automotive, industrial and medical equipment. Um, but it's also the case that in the meantime, we have um, lots of customers also, also from small to mid-size uh, companies. So even the companies having just one or two to cut seats. So because it turn, turned out that um, using Composer is always of value if you need to document or describe a product, wherever that is. So currently we have around uh, a, a bit more than 4,000 customers with more than 50,000 licenses out right now. Okay, so now let's go for the live demo. Um, so this is the the user interface. If you have a if you have a look, it does not look like a, let's say engineering software. It is more like 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 an office product. So on the top you have that um, um, ribbon menu which just uh, categorizes functionality like uh, most or, or most used functions, changing the rendering, um, add what we call collaborative actors like uh, labels, measurements, call outs, cutting planes, um, and all these kinds of things uh, to enrich the scenery. And um, another tab, for example, for transforming geometry to do uh, exploded views and so on and so on. This workshop, workshops tab I will explain later on. On the left-hand side here, um, there's one area which shows in the first step, your assembly tree, which is pretty much the same like in your native CAD data. So when you're importing um, your 3D assets into Composer, it will show up the same assembly tree like in the, like in the cut system. Um, you have that uh, uh, highlighting functionality. So if you, if you select something here in that area, we this this is more or less the stage we call it the viewport it is cross highlighting in the assembly tree and it's uh, vice versa so when i'm uh, clicking on one of the assemblies it is uh, selected here in in the viewport so this is the 3d stage all the collaborative actors are organized in another tree collaborative actors as i said could be callouts and so on and so on and um, the third tab here is the list of the current views defined in your document. So when I would uh, switch to this view, you can see at first that the transition between the views is smooth. It looks a little bit like an animation. And um, it contains geometry. This view contains geometry actors. So you can see that in the assembly tree when I click on something like this. But it's also the case that when I click on a balloon here, um, it is selected in the collaboration tree. So we call it all actors um, because everything you can see in the viewport can be animated and it can change its properties. And this, the properties is this area here. So this pane is, is showing the list of properties of that what is currently selected in the viewport. I have selected this call out and it shows me the list of properties that I can change um, in, in, in this pane. For example, what kind of size 
um, the font has, and so on and so on. Um, I can change the appearance, um, make it a rectangle instead of a circle, change colors, change the way of the attach here. It's all in this list of, of, of properties. Um, another area is this here, which is currently grayed out. Um, and it shows how the, anim the animation in the, in the document is defined. We call it the timeline. Uh, it works more or less like a video um, video software. So there are some play buttons. You can go back and forth. And um, in the timeline, you have several keys. But I will go deeper into that in a, in a few minutes. So these are the, this is the views pane. And you can change between the views by just double clicking or dragging the views in the viewport. When you want to open a file, you can just go into the file menu, say open. And um, beside the different options you have, how to import files, like importing meta properties and um, merge um, uh, parts to bodies instead of, let's say, having hundreds of faces or something like that, just to simplify the geometry, because sometimes it's not necessary to have these uh, big amount of faces just only to illustrate something. You will find also th the list of supported file formats here. So beside the, the native uh, composer formats and for sure our CATIA formats, uh, it's also possible to import um, exchange formats like IGIS and STEP, um, you can directly import CREO files, PTC. Um, it's also the case that um, we can uh, read uh, common 3D formats like uh, 3DS, 3D Studio files, point clouds, VRML, um, U3D, which is 3D PDF. Um, if SOLIDWORKS would be installed on my computer, I could read also SOLIDWORKS and um, um, AutoCAD data and also uh, Siemens. Um, it's also the case that you can merge different kinds of formats into one document. So if you get the 3D data, for example, from a supplier in an in a exchange format like STEP, you can first import CATIA data and then click on that button and say merge into the current document and open a step file and make it a part of the same document. So you can merge it together and then do your documentation. So I will first um, open a more simple 3D model. So this is the gearbox. I will, I will do a bit more later on. But just to show you one thing um, concerning the platform. So if you are on the platform searching for data and you found, found something, uh, for example, like, like this 3D model, you can easily uh, just uh, start an application. And um, inside this application, so this is um, the same model here in uh, product structure design. You can just uh, export it from here. Let's see. So this folder is empty. And uh, you will have the same options um, in the platform how to convert the data. So there are different kinds of file formats, uh, monolithic files and uh, fully shadowed files. Um, but I will go for just a monolithic document. The export options, which were also available in the import dialog of Composer. Tessellation, um, quality settings, and what kind of permissions are associated with that file because when you distribute the content and um, um, you need to use the players, you can um, permit to use, for example, annotations. You can permit to, to show the tree um, and you can uh, put out 
um, for example, also the ability to use cutting planes. So if you switch off annotation, it, does, it, it would also mean that you are not allowed to measure something. So when I, uh, I have done my settings here in the 3 experience platform and click OK, I want to export this file. And go here, so here it is. And then I could just load that into Katia Composer and here is the 3D geometry. And now I could begin to, to author the content. Um, so going back to this simple model here, it consists about the 3D geometry and a set of, of views like this exploded view containing um, a bit of material. I can enable also the cross highlighting between the table and the 3D geometry. Um, some other views like a transparent view into the case of this uh, transmission, um, something with uh, measurements and so on and so on. If you would import the native um, cut data, it would look like this. So you have that more or less naked geometry and then you would begin to author the content. So the first thing um, I could do is, for example, show this uh, transparent view to the inner parts of that gearbox. Um, therefore, I would uh, just select the case, go to my render menu, um, change the rendering to, to custom. And here in the properties, I could change the priority of the selected parts to, for example, minus one. So that means that the parts are shining through. And now I could select the case again, use the context menu and, for example, invert the selection. That means everything else is now selected, all the inner parts. And uh, I give the inner parts some outlines and that would look like this. Now I've, I've created my view and I take a snapshot of that. So going back to the first one. And um, I want to now create an exploded view of the second shaft with a bill of material. So I'm selecting the second shaft in the assembly tree. Say, I just want to see this one. Change the camera a bit, zoom out. Go to my transform menu, menu and oh, come on. And do an exploded view, something like this. Um, and now I, I want to use a workshop to create all the call outs and the bill of material in just a very, very short time. So I am activating the bill of material workshop. So the workshops are, um, is functionality that could not uh, be just shown in the menu. And that therefore it just opens a new window with a lot of, of functionality. So I'm selecting my parts, say, I want to generate the bill of material. It recognizes that the bearing at the beginning, at the end of this shaft is uh, pretty much the same. It's the same. So it um, recognizes that the quantity is two. Then I create my callouts. These callouts have different kinds of uh, properties. One of the standard property is, for example, that it appears at the bottom and the top. I want to change this, make it free, um, 2D, um, uh, placeable in, 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 in the viewport. And then I go to the authoring tab, take a magnetic line and another one. And take my balloons and adjust it to the angle of my current view of the current camera. Then I sw switch on um, the bill of material and change the properties also. I don't want to have it at the bottom, but also free placeable, something like this. And I place it here and make the font a little bit bigger. So now I also save this view. 
So now we have something uh, like a nice rendering, uh, bill of material. And now I will uh, create something, a, a view with measure measurements. So I will take the mechanism, the two shafts, and I guess it was the differential. Yeah, just uh, select this one. I now switch off the perspective mode click on uh, one of the planes of this pivot to have a rectangular view to it. So I'm clicking the background, make the background white and change the rendering mode um, to technical flat with outlines and um, switch off this uh, advanced rendering functions. And now I could go to the authoring tab and place some measurements, for example, um, diameters, length, something like this, or even more sophisticated things like uh, the distance between uh, two centers. Come on, this one here. And uh, also the properties of these measurements um, can be adjusted uh, so that the color, borders, arrows, attach lines, everything is changeable. Um, and it's all, all, it's always the case if you, if you add some actors to the scenery, um, these actors inherit the standard um, properties which are set in Composer. I will talk about this in a minute. It would mean that all the actors you're using have a standard style. So we call that styles. A style, and here is the menu for that, a style is nothing else than a set of properties. So I will create this view also. And go back here and create something with cutting planes. So um, I want to set a cutting plane. I'll just cut this one. Cutting plane, for example, here and move the cutting plane in that direction. And now I'm creating another cutting plane from the back. So I have both of these cutting planes in my collaborative actors, and then I can um, activate both. And uh, for example, flip that and do it in the union mode. So, I'm, so that I'm just cutting off a half or maybe a quarter whatever you want. Um, also, the cutting planes have properties. So I could, for example, switch off um, the, the cutting lines uh, and make the cutting plane itself invisible and uh, change also the hatching, enable hatch by actor, uh, change the density of the hatching and so on and so on. So let's create another view here. And now um, I just want to um, to publish these things first in 2D. So I'm going back to this view here. And uh, the scenery is more or less made for creating a line art. So I'm going to the workshops, to the technical illustration workshop. When I'm activating this, it shows me the current paper space. So when you're publishing something in 2D, the size is something um, important. So currently I'm using the, the, the paper space um, to generate uh, all my 2D content, but this can be, it can be changed also. But just to show what happens, so uh, I just want to make a black and white um, SVG file. So I'm just uh, clicking on preview and it looks like this. And it also contains interactivity. So when I hover the mouse over one of the parts, it uh, highlights the balloon and also the entity in, in the bill of materials. So when I'm hovering the mouse over these entities, it cross highlights the part and the call out and vice versa. Um, let's go for this 
and show, show how high resolution raster images look like. Um, so you can adjust all the settings here in this workshop also. So resolution, what kind of anti-aliasing alg algorithm should be used. And if I want to publish um, a set of views, for example, here in that multiple tab. And um, this is the graphics um, which is generated in, in a half, half a second. So when I zoom in, you can see that it is really high quality. Um, it's also the case that, let me move that a little bit more in, that for example here, uh, we can generate line arts from that, maybe with coloring. Takes a bit longer to generate the colors. Would look like this. So this is vector graphics. If you zoom in, it still keeps the, the, the quality. Um, it's also the case that you can generate easily detail views. So when I'm going back to this exploded view and I want to have a detail view, for example, of this, this part here, I can click on gener generate a detail view um with uh yeah, okay with colors it looks like this as i said there are lots of different properties like uh, changing the attached type to to different um different actors here and um, enable the background do not show a border and it would look like this and uh, it will be part of the generated vector graphics. Still having this cross highlighting functionality. But you can also um, create detailed views in the high resolution image workshop. So when I would go to this view and select the second shaft saying, I want to have a detailed view of that create it okay just go sorry go to the high resolution image workshop and create the detail view here so it would look like this and you can also make the the, the background transparent and so on so what can you do with that uh, kind of detailed views? I just want to show you an example. So for example, this view here is made of uh, several detailed views. The, one on the, the ones on the top are vector graphics. This one is uh, an image and this part here is still 3D. And then you can uh, just publish 2D. It would look like this. It's also the case that um, we have different kind of libraries, for example, for images. So it, this is file-based. So you can have uh, different locations here and um, just uh, create your own image library. And from there, um, you can just drag and drop these images to the scenery and uh, change the size, the properties, the background, and whatever. It's also the case um, that you can use SVGs directly. So when you're just dragging and dropping any kinds of graphics into the scenery in Composer, it is getting part of your view. So this is the created view. So when I'm going back to the original one, it does not have these, these, these graphics inside. Um, I already talked about styles. So everything in Composer has a set of properties. And if you first use Collaborate Vectors, for example, it has a standard style. A style is a set of 
properties. So when I'm selecting these balloons and go to the styles menu, there are different styles which are valid for my selection. And I could, for example, change it to white balloons. Uh, white balloons. There is a workshop where you can um, change these styles. So the current uh, style is white balloons. And I could make the font size, for example, part of that, change it. And if I would go back to the menu and say white balloons, it changes the size here. Um, styles can be also read only so that you could define your company standards. So for geometry, for example, many customers have styles to distinguish between just environment and parts that are currently uh, part of an instruction. So this is, for example, a surrounding style from, from Volvo, and it uh, just colors the part in, in gray and give it a certain rendering. Um, let's go for another example concerning textures. And um, select, for example, this seat here the assembly tree, this seat, and I just want to see this one, turn it a bit and go to the textures workshop. So this is also file based and you can use your own textures. So now this uh, textile texture is part of that and I can adjust it orthographically to the seat. And for material definitions, I can also use um, this uh, copy tool and put that on the rest of the seat and then change the projection direction, for example, for this texture here. It's also the case that um, you could uh, render things nice, put the images in the background, uh, for example. So let me show another example. Go in here. So this is a it's it's a view where I just put an image to the background, and then you can also hey, come on a little bit here in the middle of the paper space and. And, um, produce an image from that and it's also possible that you can use these kinds of images in an animation so this is a simple animation uh, so that this uh, airplane is just following a spline and with these splines for the cameras you can for example also define walkthroughs to uh, to uh, through uh, assets like uh, like buildings or ships or whatever Animations, how to create an animation. So I'm going back to this to this model where I created the views. And um, since the timeline was all always grayed out, um, I need to change from the view mode now to the animation mode. So this is the start. If you import the data, it would look like this. So how to create an animation? Um, you just drag the timeline to a certain to a certain frame or, or a time in an animation and then set your keys. So the first thing I want to change is the camera. Then I would, for example, save the position of this starter, go a bit ahead, go to the context menu and say it should move out. It could also rotate, I would just, but I, I'm just moving it um, and give it an effect like fade out. Um, then I save the position of this part of the clutch, go ahead, move it out, and the effect should be fade out. So if I'm going back to the beginning and let this animation run, first changes the camera, moves out the starter, move out parts of the clutch. So adding a collaborative actor like a label, for example, um, I could go back to the to the time where I want to insert it, go to the authoring tab, add a label, 
and here I give it the same effect like the starter I fade it out and here I place a second label go here to the right time and fade it out again so what we are currently having is this kind of animation so the, the label appears and it moves with the part it's the same thing for many other collaborative actors. These actors have anchor points. That means that it moves with the part. It's also the case if you place measurements and you move parts and the measurement changes, it automatically changes the value of the measurement in the animation. Um, it's, also, um, it's also the case that you can create animations from views. So when I'm going back to this model here, and go to my animation tab and say okay i want to delete all the keys uh, this looks pretty crowded but um, i created some views which are showing a sequence of a service instruction so i'm just dragging the first view in the timeline second one give it a bit more space so every two seconds, I'm just dragging and dropping these views here on the timeline. And when I go to the beginning and let it play, it shows it, it shows everything as an animation. Um, it's also the case that you can just play views, for example, if I would just go here in this file and delete these views and just just play the views, the transition is always smooth. So everything I was showing concerning the, the animations, playing views, just dragging and dropping the views in the timeline and playing it, everything is available in the player. And I will show that in a minute. And it's also the case that you could create videos from that. So let me go back here and stop this. And activate. Come on, stop. Okay, and activate. Um, the animation mode. So there is an animation on how to change parts of the of, of the cockpit. So if you want to um, produce a video from that, there is a workshop for videos uh, with uh, some presets like HD, full HD, 4K. But you can also create custom resolution videos, and then you can save this either as an AVI which could uh, utilize in as an AVI any kinds of codecs you have currently um, installed on your machine or you produce MP4 or um, FLV or MKV files. So most people are using MP4s. So just to show you an example. Um, so this is something from our customers. So it's uh, an assembly instruction for a turbine. So this, the ceiling here uh, doesn't come from the cut system. It is just a poly, an animated poly line. And here you can see that the measurements were moving when you move the parts. So I don't want to show you the whole procedure, but it also uses, for example, here, cutting planes to point out things. Um, and there are also some other uh, collaborative actors like the digger, uh, which is a magnifying glass just to point out um, and, and magnif magnify small parts of uh, the animation. Um, 
The most important thing is how to publish the content. So when I'm going here, and um, for example, I want to create a PDF. Let me just open another file. This one here, it contains an instruction on how to change the motor of this, of this electric seat. So when I go into the file menu and say, I want to publish something, I could publish, for example, a PDF file. I just save it. Um, go to in the, in, into this directory and there's the PDF. The PDF now contains the player and it shows, it shows all the 3D content. That means you can use the views um, and this file contains something we call the intelligent view. So I can just uh, click on these icons which are linked to this intelligent views and it just uh, changes uh, uh, a part of the properties. So something like this. So the transition is always smooth. It looks like an animation. However, there is a button to run the animation inside the PDF. So we are in Acrobat Reader here. And it shows the instruction on how to change this this motor so the player allows you to for example stop the animation at any time um, if you gave the permissions um, to uh, to for example measure so when i go here zoom in so i'm i'm inside the animation i just stopped it and now i'm measuring a length or I zoom in and I want to know, um, for example, the diameter of this hole. I can do that. So, okay, that's uh, good for me. And now I uh, let the animation go, go ahead. So this was a PDF and um, just to mention that um, 3D Play, which is the player on the on the platform, is also available as a as a technical component. So I'm not connected to the platform right now. I'm using Chrome here um, for running this content. So when I'm clicking on a view, it shows the labels. Um, parts are moving. Transition is smooth. I have the cross highlighting functionality between bill of material in 3D and um, and the parts. And it's also the case that I can run animations. So this is uh, completely pluginless and it will even, as I said, work on your smartphone. Um, you can also publish executables from Composer. So if you go and say save as a package, then it puts the 3D data and the player into one executable. And you just double click on it and it will start playing the content. So here it is, um, and let's have the views. And as I said, it's full 3D. You can stop the animation and just zoom in. And as I said, if allowed, if you have the permission, do measurements and so on and so on. I said at the beginning, there's also a pro version of this player and you can integrate this, uh, for example, into into Office documents and use a macro um, to, to make the content interactive. So I created an Excel file, which is an inspection sheet for quality insurance. Um, and it uses a macro and the API of this player. So this player is part of the Excel um, spreadsheet. And uh, okay, 
So I need to load a 3D model. So here it is. It contains uh, PMIs. It's 3D inside Excel. And this file contains, I could also measure, this file contains different kinds of views. And I can now create the thumbnails of my um, quali quality relevant views. And um, it creates automatically, for example, links from between these fields of the view names and the content in the player. And then I could uh, enter values here and uh, fill the inspection sheet and then just uh, save it. And this, once, once loaded, this, this 3D model could get part of the Excel sheet. And then I can send it back, for example, or just evaluate the content. Um, same thing for, for example, PowerPoint. So you can use these uh, 3D models also in PowerPoint. And It's always the same player and uh, it's always uh, full 3D. So I guess we're at the end. Um, so. Brilliant. Thank you. Thank you, Jochen. And I think we are, we are coming towards the, the end of time now. Um, we haven't had too many questions. Um, we, we did have one from Mohammed uh, Abdul asking whether the, the presentation we made available. Um, so, so Emma Pateman will facilitate that and will be available from tomorrow. I guess, Joachim, I mean, if there are any questions towards the end, I would invite you to, to add them into the chat. I guess, Joachim, one question I, I had for you is um, for those that are potentially wanting to use Katia Composer, do they need to be in your, you know, a, a CAD expert to use Composer or, or could no. you get it? Using it without that, that no, the software is not is not made. It's not really made for engineers. It's made for illustrators. So the learning curve is it, you know, is pretty uh, pretty high. And that means that uh, the training is um, just only between one a maximum of three days. So if you want to create um, very complex animations then it is more three days. If you're sure. creating this content like views in 3D, it's just one day training. So Brilliant. it's uh, pretty easy Thank to use. No, that's great. Thank you. We, we have a, just had one come in from um, from Jack Bond. Um, so, so Jack asks, does a created animation presentation create and keep links to the original Katia files? I.e. if I were to create an assembly instruction animation, but then to change some of the geometry or, or one of the parts within Katia, would that then automatically update my assembly instructions in Composer? So what you can do in um, in Composer, you can use the update functionality. I didn't have the time to show that really. Um, I could show that live, but uh, it will take five minutes. However, uh, you choose just the updated model, uh, the native cut model, and update your content, and um, it will recognize the assembly tree changes and uh, changes the the content in. The platform you can then also associate the document with the product structure so that you know which version and revision was used for creating the content but this update functionality is always available even if you're working completely file-based that's it brilliant no thanks for, thanks jack good 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 question uh, as well worth worth clarifying that, that it does retain that association so thank you um I think unless there's any last minute questions, we've we've answered the the, the, the two main ones. As I said, um, uh, Emma will share my details. If you do have any other questions, are following on from today. Um, but other than that, I guess at least we'd say thank you to to Joachim. Dave. I don't know whether there's anything else you want to say before we uh, before we shut down the call. But if not, um, I'll... no, particularly no. Uh, thanks, Andrew and Joachim. Uh, excellent presentation as usual. Um, and uh, yeah. I, that's about the fourth time I've seen it, but I'll know a bit more now than last time. So, uh, excellent. Very, very if if uh, anybody's out there that wants to uh, look at any more presentations we're doing, it's uh, it's on the Near You website. You'll get it through the emails like you have been doing. Um, and, and that's it, really. So, uh, anyway, thanks for your support, everybody, and watching. So, I'll, uh, I'll sign out.
Brilliant. Thanks all. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks for your time. Bye. Bye-bye.